We'd like to go into more detail about dimensional analysis now. In performing numerical calculations, it is good practice to associate units with each quantity. The advantage of this approach is that the units for the answer will come out of the calculation. And you can use those units to also help you to decide what to do in the next step in the process of coming up with the correct answer. And if you make an error in arranging factors in the calculation, it will be apparent because the final units will be nonsense and will not be what you're looking for in the final answer. Dimensional analysis, or the factor labor method, is the method of calculation in which one carries along the units with the quantities. Basically, you've been doing this all your life. Say, for instance, I wanted you to convert 20 yards to feet. You can do that basically in your head. You know that there's 3 feet to every 1 yard, and you realize that you're going to have to multiply 3 times 20 to get to the answer of 60. You're basically in your head doing dimensional analysis because you're realizing, do I put the 3 in the numerator or the denominator and doing my calculation? All we're asking for is you to do this on paper now for more complex problems. We know that there's three feet to every one yard, and we also can look at this a different way. We can say for every one yard, there's three feet. So in essence, we're saying if I have one yard, I have three feet. So it's equivalent to one. So it's a conversion factor, and we can use that to do our calculations. Depending on what our starting unit is, in this case, 20 yards, will dictate how I use this. Do I use three feet to one yard or one yard to three feet? I want yards to cancel, so I would place the yards in the denominator to get it to cancel, which tells me I must multiply 3 times 920 to get my 60 feet. Something you've been doing every day in your head that we're just asking you now to do it on paper for more complex problems. And we're going to want those units on the numerator to cancel with the units in the denominator, which is going to dictate which way we use our conversion factor. Note that the units have canceled properly to give the final unit of feet. The proper way to arrange the conversion factor depends on the cancellation of units. In this case, we wanted yards to cancel, so therefore yards was in the denominator. If we did this the opposite way and had one yard in the numerator and three feet in the denominator, we would end up with yards squared over feet, which is not what we're looking for, which tells us we have some nonsense in our units. So we have to put the conversion factor correctly if we're going to get the correct units. The ratio of 3 feet to 1 yard is called the conversion factor and is an exact number. It doesn't affect significant figures. The conversion factor method may be used to convert any unit to another provided a conversion equation exists. Now here's some relationships between the U.S. and metric systems. Length we have one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters and several others. Uh, we also have a mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Mass, one pound is 454 grams. Volume, one quart is equal to 0.9464 liters. Four quarts is equal to a gallon. It is recommended, recommended that you memorize one set of conversion factors and work towards them to make the switch from the U.S. to metric system and vice versa. We're not going to do a lot of converting from U.S. to metric or vice versa in this class. Only on the first test there will be a couple of problems. I suggest you learn one in each one, length, mass, and volume, and have that in your head and work toward it. So if you're dealing with something in length, you're going to work toward an inch and do your bridge to get from that to the metric to centimeters and go from centimeters to what you're looking for. So I suggest you learn this top line of conversion factors. That way you can work from metric to English or English to metric. Let's do an example. How many meters are in 6.81 miles? Well, we know that our bridge is 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. So we've got to get from miles to inches. And once we get there, we can do our bridge and then go from centimeters to meters. So we go from miles to feet and feet to inches. So we've got to remember all those English conversions. And then we have our bridge of inches to centimeters. And then we have our metric system, which is this prefix difference to get from centimeters to meters. 
So we start off with 6.81 miles. So now we go from miles to feet. So I got 5,280 feet for every one mile. And I need to put it in this fashion because I want miles to cancel. Next, I'm going to go feet to inches, which is 12 uh, inches is equal to one foot. And I'm going to have my foot in the denominator to get that to cancel. And now I'm going to use my bridge. And my inch will be in the denominator because I want it to cancel. So now I'm in centimeters. I need to get to meters. We know that there's 100 centimeters for every one meter. So my 100 goes in the denominator for I can get centimeters to cancel. And if I multiply everything out, 6.81 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 times 1, and divide that by uh, 1 times 1 times 1 times 100, we get our answer of 1.10 times 10 to the fourth meters. This is the same system we use for any conversion factor. What happens if we're going to do the square of a unit and use a square term of our conversion factor? Say, for instance, how many inches square are in 12.00 feet square? Well, we start off with our unit again to start off 12.00 feet square. And we're going to now multiply that by our 12 inches to 1 foot. Once again, I'm putting feet in the denominator again to cancel. However, i got to get the whole term to square, so I will be squaring the whole term. Now you got to realize when you square the whole term, the conversion factor is squared to cancel the units. The coefficient as well as the unit is squared, which means in essence, this 12 inches 1 foot is squared means that I have 12 squared as well as inches squared. My 1 is squared as well as feet is squared, when in essence means that my conversion factor is really 144, 12 squared, inches squared over 1, 1 squared is 1, feet squared. So now, I would take 12.00, multiply it times 144, my feet squared now cancels, which again gets me my final answer which is 1,728 feet squared. The key to remember here is you've got to square the whole thing. All parts of that conversion factor are squared. That way you have your feet squared to cancel out. Homework 8 deals with conversions. We have one more slide in this chapter. This goes back to the prefixes that I mentioned earlier. How many milligrams of sodium hydrogen carbonate or 55.0 milliliters of a solution that contains 3.48 grams per liter of sodium hydrogen carbonate? So I'm going to take my 55.0 milliliters and I want to convert that into milligrams. Well, to go from a volume to a mass term, we know that we can use density to do that. So then I would multiply by my density. Next, 3.48 grams per liter. However, I got milliliters and I have liters. Well, remember we said earlier that I can just basically say, okay, I can just cancel the liters and not worry about the prefix and leave the prefix there. So my liters cancel and I'll leave my milli here. I didn't cancel that. And I have grams here, so all I do is put the two units together after I multiply the 55.0 and the 3.48, and I get 191 milligrams. Note we can treat the prefix separately from the unit. In this case, the liters cancel, and the milli is combined with the final unit of grams. So we can just get rid of the base unit and keep that prefix and move. That makes life easier as we're doing calculations. Let me show you what I mean by that. Alternately, we could have done this the normal way by canceling units one at a time ending up with the same answer. Let's see how this differs. You start off with your 55 milliliters. 
Well, I know I got to cancel at liters, so the first thing I do is convert milliliters to liters. So I would do a thousand milliliters to one liter. Milliliters cancel. So now I'm in liters. 55 divided by a thousand will tell me how many liters I have right now. Now I convert that liters to mass. So I got my 3.48 grams per one liter. My one liters cancel. So now I got my grams. 55 times 3.48 divided by a thousand would give me my grams. And now I want to get that to milligrams. So then I got to take one gram as a thousand milligrams. My grams cancel. So now if I multiply everything out, 55 times the 3.48 times the thousand divided by the thousand, I come up with the 191 milligrams. Notice what, what happens here. I got to do a conversion of milliliters to liters by a thousand, and I got to do milligrams to a gram by a thousand. They basically cancel each other out. Okay. If I just take advantage of my prefix situation, I can avoid having to do extra calculations 